If you've taken a linear algebra class, you know how important Eigen theory is. In this video, we will look at methods, facts, and quick shortcuts to find eigenvalues of any given matrix. But before that, here's a recap on what eigenvalue and eigenvectors really are. In simple terms, it tells us how a matrix transforms a given space. For example, we have a matrix 2, 1.5, 0, 0 0.5 here. And when we multiply it to the standard unit vectors i hat and j hat, here is the transformation that we get. Now just by looking at it, we cannot tell what the transformation is. We know that something squished and something stretched, but that's really all we know until we expand it using diagonalization. Here, the first matrix shows us the two eigenvectors, and the second matrix shows us the eigenvalue by which these vectors are being multiplied. So the vector 0, 1 is being scaled by 2, and the vector negative 1, 1 is being scaled by 0 0.5. Now let's watch the transformation one more time, but this time we label the two vectors we just discussed. As you can see, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues make it much easier for us to determine what a linear transformation looks like. So let's dive into some quick facts to determine the eigenvalues of a matrix. 1. The determinant of a matrix equals the product of all its eigenvalues. For example, if we look at matrix A, its determinant is negative 1 times 2 minus 4 times 1, which is negative 6. And its eigenvalues are 3 and negative 2, which multiplied also gives us negative 6. Now, why does this work? While we won't be going over proofs in this video, we will go over some intuitive ways to think about these. If you think back to taking determinants, you'll remember that one other way to find determinants is to reduce your matrix to echelon form and then multiply the diagonals. Then, if we expand our matrix to its diagonalized form, we'll see that our matrix M containing the eigenvalues is also in echelon form. And since both of these are the same linear transformation, they have to have the same determinant. Therefore, if we just multiply the diagonals of the M matrix, we will also get the same determinant. Fact 2. The trace of a matrix equals the sum of all its eigenvalues. If we use a similar kind of logic to the determinants, we can see this process. So if we look at B as an example, we'll see the trace is just the sum of the values in its diagonal. And the eigenvalues for B are 4, negative 3, and 2. So if we add those together, we also get 3. Now that we know these two facts, let's derive an equation to find the eigenvalues of any 2 by 2 matrix. So let's call the eigenvalues alpha and beta. With the first definition, the determinant of our main matrix A equals the product of all the eigenvalues. So we can say that alpha times beta equals D, which is the determinant of the matrix A. Then the trace of A should equal the sum of all the eigenvalues, so alpha plus beta equals T, which is the trace of A. Now let's rearrange the second equation to isolate alpha, which equals T minus beta. Now we can plug it into the first one to get T minus beta times beta equals D. Now let's distribute the beta and then subtract D over to the other side. From here, we can use the quadratic formula to find beta. And if we say beta uses the plus sign, then alpha will just use the negative. Now, back to our example matrix A. First, we will find the determinant, which equals negative 1, and the trace equals 2. Now, we can just plug in our values for alpha and beta, and we get that the eigenvalues equal 1 minus the square root of 2, and 1 plus the square root of 2, which is approximately this. Now, on to fact 3, which is basically saying that if the sum of all the numbers in one row are the same for all the rows of a matrix, that sum is one of the eigenvalues. Let's see that in action. Here we have a matrix C. If we add up the numbers in each row, we get the same number 1 for this matrix. So, one of the eigenvalues is 1. And just for fun, we can find the other two eigenvalues using the facts that we've already gone over. So the determinant equals 12, which is 1 times lambda 2 and lambda 3, and then the trace equals 8, which is 1 plus lambda 2 and lambda 3. Then we can list out all the possible values for lambda 2 and lambda 3 to multiply to 12, which are 1 times 2 times 6, or 1 times 3 times 4. Then we can test out those specific values and see if the sum of them equals 8. And as we can see, 1 plus 3 plus 4 does equal 8, so these two must be the other eigenvalues. Quick tip about finding the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix. If you just eyeball and look at the diagonal and see that these numbers can only be multiplied and added in a specific way to equal the determinant and trace, usually if they're prime numbers, if they're just small numbers as such, those numbers in the diagonal are the eigenvalues themselves. So whatever the other values might be on the top or bottom of this diagonal do not matter. Next up, fact 4 says that if the column of a matrix is a scalar multiple of another, then one of your eigenvalues is 0. As you can see, column 1 is 1 half of column 2. 
This means that one of the eigenvalues is zero. If one of the columns is a scalar multiple of the other, that means that the columns are linearly dependent. And to picture this, we can think of the columns of a matrix telling us where the basic axes of a plane end up. If multiple columns are the same vector but scaled, that means two of our axes will end up at the same spot, meaning we're squishing down one dimension. And if we're squishing down a dimension, that means some eigenvector has been squished down to zero. And since we know that one of the eigenvalues is zero, we can quickly find the other one by using the trace method. Now here is fact 5. It's more of a special case when you have a matrix of this form as shown here. Here, your first eigenvalue is the sum of the rows, which is a plus n minus 1 times x, and all the rest of the eigenvalues are a minus x. For example, if you look at this matrix, our first eigenvalue is 4 plus 4 minus 1 times 2, which is 10, and all the others are 4 minus 2, which is 2. Now, to remember this and kind of think about how it works, what if we replace all the 2s with zeros? Now we have a matrix with only 4s in its diagonals. And as we know that the sum of the rows equal one of the eigenvalues, so we know that 4 is one of the eigenvalues. Then, if we factor it out of 4, we'll be left with 4 times the standard basis matrix. And this basically means that each of the axes of a 4 by 4 space are being scaled by a factor of 4. So those are the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors themselves. And finally, we have the most common method, which is to find the characteristic polynomial and then find its zeros to find the eigenvalues. We'll start by finding a minus lambda times the identity matrix, which just subtracts lambda from the diagonals, and then we'll find the determinant. Since this is a 3 by 3, we'll use the long method. Then we expand it out, multiply, factor, and then we're left with this, which is our characteristic polynomial. Now we can put it in intercept form or use the quadratic formula to find our eigenvalues. Now just to recap, here are all the facts that we went over in this video. The determinant equals the product of all the eigenvalues. The trace equals the sum of all the eigenvalues. Here are the two equations we came up with. If all the rows add up to the same number, that number is one of the eigenvalues. If one of the rows is a scalar multiple of the other, one of the eigenvalues is zero. And if you have a matrix in this form, you can use these equations to find all the eigenvalues. And here are a few matrices if you would like to practice finding the eigenvalues. Answers in the description.